Hello everyone, this is Amber with Story Chasing and I am coming to you today from my kitchen in my Class B camper van and I'm going to show you how I cook inside my tiny kitchen. This is the only counter space that I have and I make use of it very well. I do cook most of my meals in here so I'm going to show you how I actually cook my meals and I usually only use one pot. So today I'm going to show you how to cook three different meals one pot for each meal so it's easy cleanup, easy to do, not very much energy that I use from my battery bank and my solar panels. So it's just super easy. So all right, we're gonna get started. And by the way, as we get started, as usual, I feel like I'm always saying this in my videos these days, you're probably gonna hear birds, trains, planes, and automobiles. I am in Oregon at one of the escapers convergences and there are all kinds of noises around but that's okay we're just gonna do this and there'll just have to be noises in the background. That's part of RV life. So, I used to have a six quart instant pot when I had my sticks and bricks house. I did downsize to a three quart. It's much smaller. I didn't need all that space and I recently got this amazing pot in pot. These little tin cans and they have made cooking in this pot so much easier and to be honest, a lot more fun. You can cook cakes, you can cook rice, but anything you can cook in your instant pot, you can cook in here. We are going to do oatmeal today. So for breakfast, I like to have oatmeal with lots of superfoods and berries and stuff in it. So I'm just gonna make rolled oats inside of the instant pot. A lot of times I'll do steel cut oats, but um, I kind of switch back and forth between both of those. I just use a half a cup of rolled oats. So next I'm gonna put raisins in here and I like to just throw a little inside. Then water, I'll get it out of my filter. I'm gonna do a cup of water. So I get water out of my travel Berkey. It's a one to one ratio on this. So if it's a half a cup of oats, it's a half a cup of water, but I do just a tiny bit more because I like my oats to be a little bit loose. So this is what it's supposed to look like before you start cooking it. You can see the water is coated on all of the oats. Once you stir the oats, put the lid on the pot and then secure the clasp. Put a cup of water into the bottom of the instant pot and then place the pot inside of the instant pot pot. Does that make sense? <laughs> Put the lid on and make sure it's set to steaming and then we're going to cook this on high pressure for two minutes. So while that's cooking I'm going to actually start my coffee. The great thing about the instant pot is that it doesn't use a ton of energy so once it gets up to pressure then you can turn on other electronic items inside of your RV. I probably could turn it on while the Instant Pot is getting up to pressure, but I'm just kind of careful and I wait till it gets up to pressure so it's not consuming so much energy from the battery bank and also taxing the inverter. I have a 2000 watt inverter, so I just wanna make sure that I don't obviously hit that max and then it'll shut everything off. So I just wait for the Instant Pot to get up to pressure and then I'll turn on my water kettle for the coffee pot. Now, one of the reasons why I use the electric water kettle instead of the propane is because I get free energy from the sun. And I have 250 watts of solar on top of my RV and I have two lithium batteries. So that um, gives me enough energy where I don't have to really use propane. In fact, since I purchased the RV, it had a full tank of propane on it and I've, it's still two thirds full right now. So I haven't even used it all. I only use it for the water heater and if I need to use the furnace, which I haven't, it's been summertime. In my sticks and bricks house, I had an espresso machine and a grinder and I loved coffee that much. It was a pretty sweet little setup, but in the RV, you just can't, can't have that. So I instead got a, it's called an AeroPress and it works really well. It's uh, great for making a latte or just regular Americano, whatever you want. Um, you can put as much water or as little water as you want in it. And it's great. So I actually bought, it comes with paper filters. It comes with these little paper filters here. I don't know if you can see. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm almost out of them. And so I was looking for something that was more sustainable and I didn't have to keep repurchasing paper filters and throwing them away. So I found online these little steel mesh ones. So it works great and it's easy cleanup too. You don't have to use that much water. All right, so that's on. I used this mug, so I have to put this little funnel thing here for the coffee to go into because this does not fit very well on top. So I put that in there. And I just do one scoop of coffee. That's a big scoop. <laughs> All right, so it is up to pressure, and we're going to turn on the water kettle. Our coffee. So once the Instant Pot actually gets up to pressure, what will happen is instead of it saying on, it'll say two minutes in this case, because I'm cooking it for two minutes under pressure and it'll do a countdown then at that point. So once it gets to the countdown and it goes down, it'll just put it on a low setting so that it actually is just kind of on warm. So the Instant Pot has come up to pressure and it is now sitting at warm waiting for me to either manual release or waiting for it to do its own release method. I'm just going to let it sit there while I fix my coffee because I need coffee right now. It was a long night. We actually did RV and van tours last night in our escapers group after we had a little pizza social. So it's kind of fun. Escapers group is a good group to be a part of. we have coffee. Put this up. One thing about being in a small kitchen is once you're done with something you want to put it away just because it takes up space on the counter and you need to move around and cook all of your other things. So I'm just going to slide this back in to the counter. And that's out of the way now so we can release the pressure on the Instant Pot, and I just put this towel over as I release the pressure. Putting the towel on there just makes so that steam doesn't go everywhere. And you can hear the little button pop up when it's done. And then release that. This is the part that's really super hot. Just gotta lift up that lid. And that's it. We have our oatmeal. It's cooked all the way through. And, oh, it looks so good. Right, and then I like to put a little bit of honey in it. Also put some chia seeds. I'm going to just kind of sprinkle some on. And you might be wondering, she's putting all of this on her oatmeal in one pot. I could put this in like a bowl, but why dirty up another dish when you have this one already ready to go? And then I have some blueberries. blueberries. I have my little stashers bag. If I haven't talked to you about this, the stashers bag are bags that you can use in place of Ziploc bags. They're made out of silicone. They work really great for prepping your vegetables and putting them inside the refrigerator. I actually prep all of my greens and put them in there. Especially because my refrigerator is so small, I'll cut off the ends of the head of lettuce, wash everything, put a small paper towel inside of the stasher bag, and then slide all of the greens in there. And these come in like several different sizes. This isn't the, the biggest size. See, like here's one that I keep my cucumber and my peppers in, and this is the one for my lettuce. So it's just amazing, actually. So it cuts down a lot of space inside the refrigerator and keeps your fruit and vegetables like really nice and crisp. They seem to last a lot longer too, which is nice. That is my meal. I'm sure the bowl doesn't look all that pretty, but hey, this works. And it's all about functionality and being able to eat healthy and, you know, make food that's good for you, that's simple and easy and doesn't require a ton of energy. So, all right, I'm going to eat breakfast now. All right, it is lunchtime and I am going to make some sushi for lunch. This is vegan sushi and it is so yummy super easy easy to clean up so i'm just going to start the rice i'm going to use some sushi rice and i'm going to do it in the instant pot inside of the pot and pot method again 
So I'm going to do a half a cup of rice. Not a one exact one to one ratio, but it's pretty close. So I'm going to do like three quarter cup of water. want to make sure all the rice is coated with water and that's it. Put the lid on. I'm going to put it back inside the instant pot. You need to make sure there's at least a cup of water in here. I had water in here for that I used earlier this morning and there's maybe a half a cup so I'm going to add another half cup just to make sure. Right, slide it in. I'm gonna make sure it's on the steaming setting. I'm gonna put the pressure cooker on seven minutes and that should high pressure cook it inside of that pot in that amount of time. So for my vegetable sushi, I like to do peppers and cucumber, avocado, celery, and carrots. So I have some vegetables from the other day that I already cut up and an avocado. So I'll use some of those for my sushi. If you've never made your own sushi, it is super, super easy. Now, you can buy fish if you want and make your own with fish, but I just do all vegetables. I'm going to kind of cut them into strips. And then the avocado. I love avocado. And it's such a good, healthy fat. It seems to make everything taste good. Okay, so my avocado is ready to go. I also have carrot. I've had my carrot shredded already. I put it on salads and in meals. I'm going to put all of this inside of a bowl so I can use my cutting board as the board to roll the actual sushi on. So then for my sushi, I use this little bamboo roller. I don't know, like a roller mat. I don't know what do you call this thing. So you just roll your sushi with this. It makes it easy. And I... We'll cover it with saran wrap so that it doesn't get all yucky. Like that and flip it over. And then you just hold it over so it's all covered. So the nori strips are organic and for you vegans out there, I don't believe that these are vegan. Even though I am vegan, I'm not a complete purist with it. So I eat vegan mostly for health reasons. I'm super sensitive to dairy and eggs and just don't really prefer meat. So I will sometimes do fish. So as one of my friends says, um, I'm vegan plus. So vegan plus fish. Usually I only eat fish if I'm out and about. And there's a train. I usually... I usually only eat fish if I'm out at restaurants and there's just not a whole lot of options. This will make about two rolls. So the Instant Pot is done cooking the rice. I have let it sit in the pot for about 10 minutes um, on the warm pressure to let it just kind of auto vent. Just going to make sure that there's still no pressure in there. So it's a little bit, just a tiny. Release that pressure before you open the lid. Make sure that button, you hear that little click when it's done. I also add a little bit of rice vinegar to this. Sushi rice traditionally calls for rice vinegar and sugar, and like a salt mixture. I don't do the sugar. I just skip it. I don't really need it. And I put like maybe a teaspoon rice vinegar in there. I just kind of do it to taste. So I'll mix it up a little bit and it gets this nice shiny kind of coating on it. Mm. Yeah, that's perfect. So that's about a teaspoon. I'm going to add your vegetables, some cucumber, some celery. Sometimes I'll even put sprouts on here, like, or like the pea shoots. Those are really good on here. All right, so we've got this ready to roll, and I just give it a quick tuck it under, roll like that, and then just 
form it with your hands. Do it tight. So it's nice and tight. And pull it off just to kind of check it. I roll it one more time like that. And then on the edges here, you want to put, I'll just get some water from the steam there. You just want to put a little water on the edges to seal it. And then give it one quick, there you go, it's all tight. So now we have our roll, we need to cut. And you can really put anything in here you want. You don't have to do the vegetables I did, just anything. So I've seen people do sweet potatoes. I mean, just fill it with what you think seems tasty. So now we're going to do the second nori roll. You always want to put shiny side down. There's a really shiny side and a kind of a dull side. So this is the shiny side. We'll put that down here. And you want to do it where, I don't know if you can see like the little preparations in the nori. You want to do that where you're rolling it like this way, not the other direction where it crinkles it. If you want more rice than this, then I suggest doubling this recipe. I just don't like to have a ton of rice. I like to have a good mixture of rice and vegetables. I could have filled that entire nori sheet with rice. A lot of people do do that, but again, I just am trying to not have as much rice. So just spread it out in a nice, good, thin coating where I leave a little space over here on the, the top and the bottom so that when you roll it those seams will come together and stay. Another thing I've done before too is mixing up like a little wasabi dressing. You can do like a sriracha sauce and a mayo if you eat mayo or um, tahini. There's all different like little sauces you can put on it. I generally like mine a little bit more plain. I don't want all the sauce. And then some more carrots. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to taste good. And you want to have a really sharp knife for this one too. So it can cut through easily without crinkling the snorri wrap and everything kind of falling apart. So see how the knife goes in fairly easily. There she is. Can you see? <gasps> that will be my lunch for today. With that, I'll also do a little bit of liquid aminos inside here instead of soy sauce. I like the liquid aminos because it has the salty flavor like a soy sauce. It tastes just a little bit different, but it's much better for you and you don't get all of that sodium. All right, that's lunch. Then I'll add my cacao powder before I add the greens or the water, just so that when you blend, the powder doesn't just get all over the place. I have to do a nice big scoop. Cacao is yummy and good for you. It's a good superfood. I keep all my spices and various things up here. Alright, next we have our greens. I'm going to do kale today. Okay. And this is already kale that I've pre-washed and cut up and put into the stasher bag. And we'll add some chia seeds. I don't do too many, but just a little. Maybe a tablespoon. Now, I'm going to put water in here. Actually, you know what? I have some coconut milk. Some unsweetened coconut milk I'll put in there and I'll add some water with it too. But the coconut will give it some really good flavor. And I just kind of eyeball it to where maybe it's half of the ingredients that I put in. Just enough to get it kind of moving. I like the smoothie a little bit thicker, not so liquidy. I'm going to put some water in there. From my Berkey Travel filter. I love this filter. The water is really good in it. Tastes like you're buying the water from the store. 
Um, this little plunger will get everything moving quick. This is going to be loud, so I'll edit this out. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to turn on my other lithium battery, too. I like to have both of them on. I don't know. It makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah, it's at 13.12 volts together with all of them. But once I turn this on, it'll go down to like 12, 6 maybe voltage. And I don't just throw this on like really quickly. I kind of like step it up. So it's just not taxing the inverter so much. All right. I'm gonna give it a quick taste just to make sure it's sweet enough. Mm, I think it needs some more sweetness. So in that case, I'm gonna put a date in instead. I just have to take the seed out. So it has a green chocolate color to it. So it's a green chocolate smoothie. And you can make that however you want with your own fruits and vegetables. There's all different kinds of combinations you can do. Mmm. That's really good. Yep. Perfect. All right, well that was three meals, one pot for each meal, super easy, simple. And this is how I cook most of the time in my tiny kitchen here in my class B van. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell as well if you wanna get notified every time I upload a video. And if you like these types of videos where I'm cooking in the kitchen and you wanna see more recipes, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can come up with. Thanks, guys.